Did you ever fear the boogeyman as a kid? That mysterious figure that hid inside closets or under beds whose sole purpose was to scare children was the source of nightmares for many of us during our childhood. It seems like the fear is almost universal, with similar stories being found all over the world. It's one thing for kids to fear these things, but what does it mean when an entire city is gripped with terror? Its citizens are afraid to walk the streets alone because every alley or dark corner could be a potential hiding place for a grisly figure waiting to jump out. This is exactly what was occurring in England during the reign of Queen Victoria. Authorities were inundated with reports of a devilish man with a ghoulish smile and unusual clothing that would leap out of the shadows to attack innocent pedestrians. Reports of the man became so numerous and widespread that he was even given a name. spring Hill Jack, the Terror of London. In 1837, a businessman was walking through Barnes Common in southwest London on his way home at night. The path he was following was adjacent to a cemetery, and as he was walking past it, he heard a rustling noise coming from inside the cemetery walls. The area he was walking through was well known to be rife with crime, so he quickened his pace, afraid that he was being trailed by a thief. Suddenly he saw a dark figure leap over the cemetery wall and land right in front of him. He was shocked at the sight of a man with a very unusual appearance. He was tall and thin, with glowing red eyes and an unusually wide smile on his face. He was wearing a helmet and dark cloak, and underneath it there was a tight-fitting white garment that resembled oilskin. The businessman ran away as fast as he could, all the while hearing strange, shrill laughter behind him. The next month, Mary Stevens was walking through a large park in South London on her way to Lavender Hill, where she worked as a servant when she too encountered Jack. Much like the first sighting, he leapt in front of her out of the darkness, while babbling with a ringing laughter. This time, however, Jack grabbed the victim and attempted to sexually assault her, going as far as ripping her clothes with his sharp, metallic claws. Mary yelled for help and Jack fled as soon as local villagers came to her aid. Several sightings of spring Hill Jack followed, and many of them shared similar characteristics. He would usually target women walking alone at night, leaping in front of them, and sometimes even chasing or assaulting them. He was reported to have been able to jump as high as 10 feet, and a couple of witnesses even said he could breathe blue fire. He had become somewhat of a celebrity in the area, and rumors of his exploits constantly filled the pages of the newspaper. The most terrifying encounter occurred to a young woman named Jane Alsop in 1838. It was a quarter to nine in a small village named Old Ford. Jane heard the bell outside her house ring and went to the door to answer. She opened the door a crack and could vaguely make out a shadowy figure in the darkness. It looked like a tall man wearing a helmet and a cloak, but it was too dark to make out his features. She asked him what he wanted. I am a policeman, the strange voice said. For God's sake, bring me a light. We've caught Spring Hill Jack here in the lane. Jane ran for a candle and went outside. She handed it to him and as the flame lit his face, she saw that the man facing her was no policeman. The light illuminated the man's devilish features and exaggerated smile. There was no mistaking him for anyone other than spring Jack himself. He was once again wearing the tight-fitting oilskin suit and strapped to his chest was a strange object resembling a lamp. Jane screamed in horror and attempted to run back into the house, but Jack grabbed her with his claws. He tore off pieces of her clothing and hair as he wrestled her to the ground. He laughed maniacally and blue flames shot from his mouth as the girl struggled against him. Hearing the noises outside, Jane's two older sisters, Mary and Sarah, ran to her aid. They were able to pry Jane from Jack's hands and somehow managed to drag her away. The rest of the Alsop family appeared outside and this seemed to frighten Jack away. The attack on Jane Alsop was reported in the Times later that week. The police apprehended a suspect named Thomas Milbank who had reportedly been bragging about attacking Jane in a local bar. His coat and overalls had been found outside of Jane's house, and the candle he dropped was also recovered nearby. He was let go because Jane Alsop insisted that the man who attacked her could breathe fire, and also said that Thomas did not match the physical description. 
Reports of spring Hill Jack lingered for 60 years. Throughout this time, he was the subject of many plays and penny dreadfuls. It seems as though the public could not get enough of the mysterious madman. But who was he, really? A popular theory is that spring Hill Jack was the alter ego of the third Marquess of Waterford, who was known for his irregular and often violent pranks, and who was in the area at the time of the initial Jack sightings. He had earned the nickname the Mad Marquess because of his affinity for wild behavior. An acquaintance accused the Marquess of being spring Hill Jack in 1880, claiming that the young nobleman would amuse himself by jumping out at strangers at night in an attempt to scare them. The more likely explanation is that spring Hill Jack wasn't just one person, but instead a group of pranksters who used the public's fear to their advantage. The initial sightings could have very easily inspired generations of imitators. But how do you explain the seemingly supernatural feats that spring Hill Jack was said to be able to accomplish? Bizarre theories that he was an alien, or a time traveler, or even the devil himself have often been brought up when discussing him. But it's more likely that his abilities were exaggerated by witnesses. Still, you can't help but wonder if it's possible that maybe there's something more to the story. The legend of Spring Hill Jack continued long after the sighting stopped, and thanks to author Alfred Burridge, he even became a sort of anti-hero of the era. In Burridge's fictional stories, Spring Hill Jack was a wealthy aristocrat with a secret underground lair who would don a bat-like suit to fight crime. That might sound a little familiar. If you like this video, please subscribe to Cryptic for more.